I would think of the Institute's mission as, in broad terms, as kind of tracking, understanding the human footprint on the planet. The role of archaeology in the Archaeological Institute, uh, I think, uh, within the Institute, is to provide long-term perspective on that human footprint. And what I'm going to talk about is the traces we have for the earliest people in the state of Illinois and how we track them with stone tools, because we're talking about the end of the Ice Age. Uh, we really don't have much evidence, but the evidence that we do that survives is often stone. And what I've been able to do working with geologists is track the stone, and they've been traveling long distances. So why they were traveling so long, if we look at the highway through time, Clovis culture is the earliest evidence for humans at the very beginning, at the end of the Ice Age. That human footprint is very tiny, almost macroscopic. I mean, microscopic, we can hardly find it. But at Cahokia, it's getting huge. Um, so these Clovis groups, named after their spear points, uh, were small bands of late Pleistocene hunters, gatherers. They, uh, their stone tools are the most durable, and we can track how they moved around the landscape by linking their stone tools to bedrock sources, uh, which particularly outcrop along the edge of the Illinois Basin. These tools are from Indiana, a chert type called Attica chert from the Wabash Valley, but they're found in St. Clair County, Illinois. So the Illinois Basin, our interior part of Illinois, really doesn't have much outcrops of chert or flint. And so uh, when I've been tracking these folks across the landscape, we can see that they're moving long distances. And along the edges of the Illinois Basin, where we have major chert outcrops, like here at Valmire. So um, if they were traveling across the state, we could, see, we could hopefully see that pattern. And I've looked at a series of, of sites and the Illinois Basin is this great feature because it has a great laboratory because it has virtually no stone available. So we see groups traveling across that basin. And I looked at about a dozen sites in southwestern Illinois, both late Pleistocene, which would be Clovis, and early Holocene, which are Dalton culture, and charted out where they got their stone, how far did they go, the farthest sources that they used. And the, the Clovis folks were traveling long distances. So if you were in the Wabash Valley and you wanted to come to the Mississippi Valley, there was really no stone sources in between. So you can see that they pretty much are getting stone sources from around the Illinois Basin, around the edges, and moving where, uh, across the state. Whereas in the early Holocene, once I plotted out where they were getting the stone for their tools, um, it was much closer to home. So at the beginning of the Holocene, uh, we see a reduction in the areas. The, the red dots are campsites, the little triangles are the church sources, and they're moving much shorter distances and focused much more on riverine habitats. They weren't marching across the state. Why were Clovis guys marching across the state? I'll try to answer that in a second, but the Dalton groups uh, were settling into the Holocene environment. It's the environment we know today. Um, there's fluctuations, but it's essentially the developing oak hickory forests and rivering habitats, the animals we know today, and the patterns of mobility by tracing out their church sources seem to continue pretty much through the Holocene until we get to agricultural times when people settle down and start uh, farming and have a much more prominent imprint. But these early Holocene folks are the first ones to start heavily using wood. These are the first heavy-duty woodworking tools that we find. They were uh, hafted onto wooden handles and probably used to uh, make some of the first dugout canoes and other implements like that that we see being used throughout the, uh, the prehistoric and into the historic period. Um, these heavy duty woodworking tools are absent in the Clovis in the late Pleistocene time, but they are present in the Holocene and then we get ground stone axes and many other kind of woodworking tools. This is actually a a dugout canoe from the early historic period that was found near, near Dixon Mounds. So um, why were these Clovis guys traveling uh, to cope with shifting environmental conditions? It's the ending of the Ice Age to intercept herds, perhaps caribou, caribou or just to, to rendezvous with groups. Um, there's few people on the landscape. We know that. Their footprint is very small. When we look at the rest of the Midwest, we see these similar long patterns. And, I would say that um, they're doing all three. And why you would have high mobility would be to adapt to, to uncertainty. And the size of that footprint, what we do with archaeology, is a long-term perspective. 
at, at, the, at the end of this prehistoric era when we have Cahokia mounds, we have a, a much bigger footprint. We get human ecosystems. We get